Hi, it's Paul from Model Build International. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down there. Also click the notification bell. Otherwise you won't get notified of things and then you'll be upset when you realise you've missed a giveaway or a competition. So today we're going to have a look, well, a quick look through the pages of the latest issue of U-Boat in Focus. This is number 18. Okay, so we're just going to have a quick look through some of the pages of edition number 18 of U-Boot in, in Focus, uh, just to give you an idea of what's inside. Um, and if you've not seen it before, basically it's sort of kind of the definitive current uh, newsletter about things being found out and researched about the German U-Boats in the Second World War. Um, full of previously unpublished photographs each issue and about four issues per year um, So it's in German English. English is perfect um, Let's start off the first thing. There's a correction um, Basically first time I've ever seen them make a mistake um, Basically photo 3 caption page 5 used the wrong caption for the photograph um, Basically mentioned uh, U-73 sunk HMS Eagle, not HMS Ark Royal. Um, a photograph of the U-boat commander. She was a neat and tidy, and in the conning tower of a U-boat coming uh, coming back, maybe. Um, contents: um, a tutorial readers forum, Type 7 sea boats, Type 21 boats. Known elm emblems, photos with a story, conning towers, there's also a story there as well, documents, uh, scenery, background, another longer article there, and cap badges. Um, so I'll over. Um, basically, the um, basically an editorial from Axel. Basically, in a nutshell, it says there's three main articles in two or three longer articles in this issue and I'll just mention them as I go through and explain quickly what each article is about. Readers Forum uh, where people uh, post photos from their own um, collections to enhance or correct previous articles and every issue has people submitting information and photographs from uh, from their own collections that um, give more information about things or just give more detail about things. And I think it says in here, it says he actually gets a lot more information than there's possibly space for in the reader's form here. So there's some information there. Uh, type 7 sea boats, uh, that's about U204. Um, an unknown emblem clarifying um, what U629's emblem really looked like. Um, there's a definitive textbook, I think it's actually, it's quite old now, but there is a whole heap of updates and corrections to that, and they're pretty much all in this series of magazines. Um, an uncommon photo from the final days of the war, two Type 21 boats. So now we come to the first of the main articles. This is about U-boats in the Spanish Civil War. And you can see here it's got stripes on the conning tower. There's also some stripes on the decks as well. Um, there was a few German U-boats used. Each of the countries doing the naval patrols had an area of the coastline uh, to look after. There's a map showing you where, which area was Germany's. The U-boats that were involved. Um, more detail about these. Some U-boats um, had the bars horizontal um, around the conning tower um, because they had smaller conning towers. There was also a whole bunch of, um, should I say, secret operations going on that I don't actually think much was known about them previously. Um, where, should I say, the secret operations where the U boat arm was, should I say, definitely taking sides in the Spanish Civil War. Um, there was a whole heap of previously unpublished photographs about this 
um, lots of details. There's a colour profile of a U-boat with neutrality markings on it. Um, there's photographs of the decks of U-boats where they have neutrality markings on the decks as well. Um, actually in a couple of different places. So there's a whole heap of information about that, about 10 pages worth. Um, that just lot there. Um, including colour photographs, you can see what on there. About to Conning Towers, and this also is another s longer article. Uh, U-766, basically the, um, they set aside a bunch of U-boats so that when the Allied invasion came they had a bunch of U-boats to send against the Allied invasion fleets. However, that turned out to be a completely futile ex exercise and there's a lot of detail here about U-766, almost like a a blow-by-blow -blow account of uh, the sortie and they were literally um, if they surfaced they were literally detected within minutes at times by either aircraft or surface ships and basically it's um, operations by U-766 as part of the Landwehrt group from June to August 1944 I think I remember seeing somewhere it said the futility of operations against the invasion fleet, and it pretty much was that. Um, so there's a lot of interesting information in, in there about things, and an update on what the uh, emblem on the conning tower looked like as well. Um, so I'll flick forward. An actual document here commemorating. One of the departments of the Brest Naval Shipyard, and it explains actually a bit about the organisation of the Brest Naval Shipyard, where the workers came from. Um, here's one to interest to model builders. How about that for a diorama? Two U boats literally just uh, close together so the captains can, uh, well, shout at one another rather than talk, but shout at one another. Don't even have to use the megaphones. Might be an interesting diorama. Um, and then the other main article which is really interesting. I don't think anybody's actually written in depth about this before. But what it's about is uh, Alberich, the German U-boat cap of invisibility. Um, if you know modern submarines, you'll know that, uh, I don't know if they still do it, but they had like uh, tiles put on the outside of them to reduce their um, noise um, that would be detected by other ships. Um, well basically they started trialling this with U-boats um, back in uh, 1939. Um, and it took, um, basically goes through the whole process. There was different things tried. Um, um, basically they ended up with like a rubber sheet of sorts, rubber tiles on the outside of the U-boats and there's certain aspects to it that made it work better or worse and basically it's the whole story of how they went from the idea of you know let's let's try and make the U-boats uh, so as it can't detect them um, the initial attempts, the problems they had how they overcame those problems um, what the U-boats look like. There's a photo there, there's also more photographs as well. Um, all the way through to the sort of final um, results which actually were pretty good if, you know, sort of by, um, what, end of 1944 the trials were um, pretty good and it was, it was kind of working. Um, they'd sort of solved a lot of the problems and um, got it to work, but it was too late in the war to mass produce it, not enough resources, not enough time to start putting it on U-boats in, in any numbers. But it's a really interesting story about something that probably most people don't know very much about, and it goes into an awful lot of depth about it. Um, different U-boats and so on and so forth. Um, cat badges, how they changed, and that goes on to the back here, a couple of cat badges from certain U-boats. And the last bit here is an advert uh, 
for a set of decals that um, Luftfahrt Verlagstadt is doing for the Type 9Cs in 170 second and we've already done a review of that one um, so if you're interested in decals or 170 second Type 9C from Ravel um, I'll put the link underneath the video and there's more information um, about the topics of the book uh, on the website articles, I'll put a link there to that as well. Um, as I said before, the best place to buy these from is direct from the publisher since they cost the same as getting them everywhere else, except the publisher uh, basically uh, makes a bit more money off buying direct from them and that money gets ploughed back into making future editions. Um, and actually the cheapest way to get them is subscriptions, then where you get them even cheaper as well. Um, so there you are, the latest issue of U-Boot in Focus.